talking in front of people who are not my students. So, I don't think that's going to work on the track yet. What? Research models. And so when I started looking at this thing, I think they change the name of stuff every so often and give you um, a new a new term for it. And I'm going to show you three. Um, this is one. Um, um, According to the National Math and Science Initiatives, only 44% of high school graduates were college ready in math. Only 36% were ready in science. You think about that, you know, and you think about what the legislature is trying to do to education. Um, you know, everything's based on test scores. Um, and so I started looking about writing. Um, and I found this, and all I'm going to point to is what you see in the red. It says teachers are not doing an effective enough job of teaching writing. And when I read that, I was offended because I'm an English teacher and I know that I taught my freshmen last year in freshman seminar how to write a research paper. I went through all, we learned peer editing, we learned proofreading, we learned citing, we learned thesis, we learned topic sentence, etc., etc. And I have them again this semester for English three, and they don't know what I'm talking about. You know, um, you know, I know when I was here what kind of job some of the teachers were doing, but I think the problem is consistency. Okay. Um, ALA, the American Library Association, says to be information literate, a person must be able to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate, and use it effectively. Um, our students know how to locate some things. They don't know how to decide whether what they've located is credible or reliable information. And they don't know how to use it effectively. When they, when they get it, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to synthesize. Um, so, you know, the um, the when you when you're trying to promote people for being ready for tomorrow, being ready for the world, um, we need to teach our students how to be problem solvers, how to use information, how to speak and work independently. Um, technology, that's the answer for everything now. Um, they need to have to work collaboratively. They need to know how to write. They need to know how to comprehend what they read. They're not reading. They don't want to read. Um, the libraries are are dying. Um, they, you know, I, and as I was doing reading and research and different things about how 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 to make the library more popular more useful, you know, the li libraries are turning into maker spaces, um, and now they want you to put gaming hubs and things in, to, 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 I think if, if, you, if you build it with, they will come kind of thing, um, but where are, they, where are they getting and using the information and where are they going to come from? So, much of what we do begins with a process. If you think about how you got dressed this morning, okay? Um, once you learn the process, it becomes second nature. Um, being consistent increases thinking skills. Um, it develops a pattern. So if everyone is doing it the same way, <coughs> then it has to catch up. I think this is 
to think about it. So if you were getting dressed this morning, what factors did you consider? Talk about what the weather is going to be. It's Friday, dress down day, you know, uh, what kind of routine, uh, what tasks you had to complete, what interaction you want to do. Um, and that's the mindset behind these research processes. Um, there are three research modes. I'm going to tell you about two real briefly. Um, and then I'm going to talk mostly about the B6. I'm telling you about the other two because I have to. Um, I think Clinton High School has um, implemented or is in the process of implementing the Big Six. Have you guys heard about the Big Six? I have. You have. Um, the first model is the DIF model. Um, it uses headings uh, in a cycle. Um, um, it uses a six, six step systematic process that emphasizes evaluation of online sources it's useful in teaching um, especially digital learning um, it, it has um, it, it's more data rich for web sources um, so you take the model what am I looking for where will I find it how will I get there how good is the information and how will I ethically use the information so that's another thing our students don't have to do is ethically use information. Um, I'm so tired of seeing more exciting pages with just the URL, you know. Um, and, and when you say you didn't cite this correctly, it doesn't matter how many times I've been over MLA. You know. And I'm an MLA girl in library sciences APA. And so my first semester, everything I turned in I did wrong because I did it in my way and they sent out the APA and I was using that APA manual but oh habits die hard and I was um, some some kind of I was I just think you're supposed to capitalize the letters of the title APA doesn't do that um, and you know I mean, some things are just innate you know and you're just supposed to do it um, the lock is a four-step um, process. <coughs> it um, emphasizes a framing um, of an authentic question, uh, analysis of information, synthesis of ideas. It encourages wise decisions and how to present results, um, the characteristics um, should be used in, in the planning. Um, and, and it has stages as well. Um, you locate the resources. Well, you know, that's kind of consistent. Um, it, it wants you to frame a question, um, which I try to stay away from because my students want to begin every paper with a question, and I just tell them, no, don't do that. Um, if they, if they can learn how to rearrange the question into a statement, then that's okay. Um, and then they learn how to organize their information. They use learning logs and, and graphic organizers to do this. Um, they communicate their findings to others, <coughs> synthesize their information, um, and then they look at what their outcomes are. Um, if they've answered their questions, was the process efficient? Did the results help them? Did it help their audience? Um, and so you just brought, simplify it, you know, and, and you would teach students just this. You know, once you get them to understand these simple terms, locate the resources, uh, and maybe give them a little information on how to locate the resources, where to look, et cetera. Um, and then then it becomes sort of second nature, like, you know, when you're learning to tie your shoes, when you form the loop, you know, um, kind of thing. Um, you know, this kind of thing comes later. Are your resources valid? Um, is your information organized? Um, have you reported your findings? And was your outcome useful? And then we get to the big six. Um, so, you know, if information literacy 
is to um, recognize when your information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate, and use information. Um, well, if you break that down into six parts, um, this is your big six. Um, so you first have to define your task. Um, you know, what is, what's the assignment? What am I supposed to do? How many steps will it require? Um, what kind of product is expected? And if you get students in the habit of, of doing it, and, and I don't know, sometimes I think it's a little bit simple, um, but if you get them in the habit of saying, you know, what is the task definition? What have I asked you to do? And you use this term and you plaster it on the wall, you know, so that they see it and they do it regularly. And they've even got this song uh, broken down for elementary students. It's called the Super Three. They've simplified it uh, a little more. I think this is pretty simple. Um, and so after they um, figure out what it is that they're supposed to do, they, they define their problem, they identify the information they need to solve it, then they have to determine all the possible sources. Where will they find the information? Um, and, and this, again, like I say, is very simple. You know, where am I going to find information? Well, books. You know, um, in my day, it was the encyclopedia. Um, I don't know that, um, I think whoever works for World Books probably hungry now. Um, websites, you know, they, want, they, don't, they don't know how to use a book. So I encourage, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, but I usually say you have to have one printed source. Um, they don't know how to use an index and find you know, the heading or whatever that they're looking for and go to it and put it so much violence and make them do that. Um, websites, interviews, um, scholarly journals, I think they have such an unfair advantage because if they use NC Live or NC Live out, it gives them the citation. But if things I haven't worked so hard for, if you haven't worked so hard for, they don't even think about that. Um, um, Location and access. So, okay, I know I need books and encyclopedias and websites and interviews and journals and whatever. Now, where will I get them? The library. The school library, the public library. Um, I visited the public library downtown recently. Um, it was sad how underrepresented, underrepresented the teen section. Um, it's sad how underrepresented it is in most schools. Um, literacy is not promoted um, as such these days. But, um, you know, the computer lab at the library was full um, of all ages, interestingly. Okay? Um, you know, I think I'm sheltered because I, I think you know, most people have at least a smartphone, you know, now that can do things that I never imagined. Um, but you know, y'all said that most people live at home, but there are a lot that do not. Um, anyway, so after you found your information, you know where you can access it, then how are you going to use it? Um, and this is where our students struggle. Um, you know, how are they going to engage? Um, how are they going to formulate actual um, sentences, you know, um, and you know, how they're going to extract it. How do I know what in, in this, this whole page of information is relevant to my topic? And that's what you have to, uh, to do when you're teaching them how to use the information. It's a secret spot. Mm -hmm. um, synthesis is another big issue. I recently had my students write a splinter essay um, where I gave them one topic and they all had to research portions of that topic. And then they had to come together and write one essay. And I had them set up a Google document. <coughs> and it had to have consistent voice and consistent.
consistent siding and consistent um, verbiage and what have you. Um, and, and they were supposed to proofread each other's and help. They were awful. Um, and, and one fella said, I was reading this and it was just bad. I said, how do you think I feel when I'm having to read 50 of these? You know, um, they do not know how to organize their information. Um, you know, when I was in high school, Miss Frankie Moore made you buy the yellow envelope and no cards. And, and she made you handwrite the notes and use the big yellow envelope and kept up with everything in the big yellow envelope. And it was tedious. Of course, that was before the computer, um, and that was when you know, I remember the manual typewriter and mess up and be out of correction, fluid and have to uh, retype that whole page or whatever just because um, that one spot on the paper. Um, you know, but outlining and note taking is important. You know, teach your students how to create a word document. Um, and take notes on one source. And then go back through that Word document and highlight um, everything on this one little topic in yellow, and this one little topic in green, and this one little topic in blue, or whatever, so that they know how to organize it. Um, and, and then teach them how to present it in their own words, um, you know, and how to synthesize the information. The last step is evaluation. You know, peer editing is a big deal now. I have a hard time with peer editing because, you know, they say, Miss Jackson, she put a comma here, and I really don't think there should be one here. And there shouldn't be, you know. And it's it's hard when you're peer editing if you don't know how to construct a good sentence. Um, but, you know, somebody can add something recently um, I have taken a sheet of, of suggestions and typed them up and split them, and everyone in the class reads the paper for one thing in mind. So yours might be thesis, yours might be um, grammar, yours might be um, topic sentence. You know, so you scan that paper. Yes, it has a thesis. Check it off, hand it to the next person. You know, and that way they get to see a lot of papers. But they're only focused on one thing. Um, you know, but judge the process. You know, or did, did I meet the requirements for my paper? Um, you know, have I, is my information clear? Does it make sense? You know, everybody ought to be able to determine whether a sentence is a fragment or a or whatever. Um, and after the thing, what grade did I receive? Do I think it was fair? You know, um, most of the time, the slack would force say I got what I deserved. Um, anyway, the big six is effective only if it's consistent. So if every English teacher is doing it and no one else, um, you know, and, and after you've been doing it for 20 years, you kind of have your own way of doing it. And some of this new stuff, you're not really interested in, you want to do it the old way. But if everybody does it the same way, it has to catch on. You know, consistency is, uh, if we all put our pants on one way at a time. You know, um, consistency flows. Um, and if it's applied in all subjects, it doesn't matter if, if you teach history or you teach science or you teach English. I'm not sure how to augment this uh, or imply this. I apply this, I get my word right in it the math department, but anyway, um, it provides a common vocabulary. So when I say task definition in my class, and he says it is, everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, if you emphasize the terminology um, and, and make it kindergarten to start with, um, so that everybody understands. Um, after a while, they understand. Um, Create a culture of siding. Um, I'm trying, even if I do just a little something in class, um, they have to sign it. I just always, even for, for silly little things, um, because that gets them in the habit of doing it for the bigger things. Um, and, you know, if you integrate it into instruction, um, 
place the skills to be learned in context, place them all around the room, um, get them, and teach them one at a time. You know, what did I ask you to do today? Define your task. Um, next week, um, I think the Christy has a, a big handbook downstairs in the library um, that, that I think they will they make November uh, task definition books in December. Um, you know, do it in stages. I think a month is a little long. I think you could do this, you know, in six weeks. Um, anyway, um, questions?